Okay, so we left off on, um, oops. Okay, so we left off on um, the idea that after transport, there's, um, when you're moving large molecules either into the cell endocytosis or moving large um, clumps of molecules outside the cell, could be exocytosis. Um, so whenever you're moving something really big, you're going to need lots of energy to do that. So that's why these two types of def um, transport under, um, is under the active transport category. So they require energy to, you know, make this vesicle and to move it around. Alright, so molecular transport. So small molecules and ions are carried across membranes by proteins in the membrane that act like pumps. So um, ions, again, are charged. So like, um, like we were talking about sodium and potassium, which are positively charged part um, ions. If they were trying to get through the membrane here, um, these tails are nonpolar. So they would not interact with the polar molecules or the ions here. So we need, again, some sort of protein to help that happen. Um, so the protein here is a protein pump. So many cells use such proteins to move calcium, which is a positive positive two charge, potassium, which is a positive one charge, and sodium, which is a positive one charge across the cell. So the changes in protein shape seem to play an important role in this pumping process. So here what we see going on here is that for some sort of process, um, we have a small amount of these ions on the top side here and more ions in inside the cell. Um, so some sort of process needs this ion, these ions be pumped across the area from a high concentration to a low concentration, which is against the gradient. So this is naturally not what the cell wants to do. The cell likes to go from, I'm sorry, it's going from, yeah, here it's going from a high to a low. Um, so if you are, so this would require some energy. Um, so let's say, because here it's kind of going, um, the arrow is going the wrong direction. If you're going from a low concentration to a high concentration, um, that would require energy. S things like to go from high to low. So here it would be going the opposite. So I think the arrow here is wrong. Um, we can talk more about this in class because I'm sure this will be something that people have questions about because it looks like this um, picture that the book has is wrong. Um, but again, active transport, if this if these ions were being pumped from this low side to the high side, that's the opposite direction that these ions should normally go based on diffusion and passive transport. So in order to go from a low concentration area to a high concentration area, um, you need energy to do that for um, the cells to actually use this pump to go from low to high. So a considerable portion of energy used by cells in their daily activities is devoted to providing the energy to keep this form of active transport working. So the use of energy in these systems enables cells to concentrate substances in a particular location even when forces of diffusion might tend to move these substances in opposite directions. So again, in order for some sort of process or reaction to happen in your body, sometimes you need to um, have ions or molecules go from a low concentration to a high concentration, which is going against, like if you're trying to go through the hallway um, against, um, if people are going, a big crowd is going in one direction, you're trying to get through the opposite way and go through the crowd. Well, it takes a lot of energy to do that. So it's the same idea with um, um, the cell. So moving things from low to high takes a lot of energy because that's not how things naturally flow. Um, so it takes a lot of energy for the cell to do that. So that's um, the whole part of active transport. So I'm guessing we'll go over that a little bit more and I'll draw a be better picture in class. Okay, that is it for now. All right, bye.